Good morning. Good to see you. Richard Preston is living with an incurable brain cancer called glioblastoma. So Richard, you were diagnosed five years ago. Yep. And what did they tell you at the time? Bad news, you've got terminal brain cancer, it's malignant and it could grow back at any time. So um, within five days of the optician saying there's something dodgy in the back of your left eye, I was in the operation room having a six hour operation on my head. It's one of the most common types of malignant brain tumours in adults and 70% of people diagnosed with glioblastoma die within a year. I'm Emma Keeling in London, where a professor is on the brink of a breakthrough using Soviet-era treatment once shunned by Western countries. Oncologist Dr Matt Williams says although brain cancers are rare, they disproportionately affect young people and are more often fatal, so their impact can be greater. So why are brain tumours so hard to treat? I don't really think we know all the answers. There are two obvious things. The first thing is that they're rare and therefore we don't get that many examples of them. But the second thing is the brain is a protected structure. So it's obviously protected by the skull, so it's difficult to get tissue. But even within the skull, the brain is insulated from the rest of the world by something we call the blood-brain barrier. And so actually most of the chemotherapy drugs that we give that might work for breast or lung or colorectal cancer just don't get into the brain. Throughout the body, there are small gaps between the cells which line the interior of blood vessels. These gaps allow ions and small molecules to pass from the blood to the surrounding tissues. But in the brain, these cells are closer together, even overlapping, which allows only nutrients, water and some gases to pass into the brain tissue, keeping out pathogens and toxins. Often brain tumours are regarded as kind of the poor cousin of other cancers. And so part of my job is to try and turn that around and say, actually, no, no, don't do it in breast, lung, prostate, and then come and look at brain. Come and work on brain, because if you can crack that, which is difficult, everything else will be a piece of cake. One of the researchers Dr. Williams spoke to was Professor Armin Hajitu. So do you remember that conversation with Dr. Williams? I do, it still sticks in my mind, especially when he described it the, the poor, the very poor prognosis and the disappointing outcome of existing treatments. Professor Hajitu has been working for 12 years on a cancer treatment using bacteriophage therapy. Bacteriophages are the most abundant and diverse microbes found in the body, but the property that makes them of special interest is that they can cross the blood-brain barrier. A bacteriophage, or simply phage, is a kind of virus that only infects bacteria. Thousands of varieties exist, but each variety infects only one or a few species. The phage punctures the surface of bacteria, injecting it with its own genetic material. The bacterial DNA is then modified to manufacture more copies of the phage, which eventually kills the bacteria. The phage is able to recognise its prey by proteins, known as receptives, which are found on the surface of each species. In the 1920s, phage therapy was used extensively to treat bacterial infections. The discovery of antibiotics saw the treatment lose favour in the West, but Russia and Eastern European countries continue to study and use phages. This is what we call a tissue culture room in which we grow human glioblastoma cells we grow them in order to test whether our phage can actually kill them before initiating the clinical studies in animals. So how long before you see any changes to the cancer cells once the phages have been added? With the first generation of viruses we had, it could take up to four or five days. But now with the superior, we have better viruses, it could take two days. We can start to see the death in cancer cells. Professor Hajitu and his team have genetically modified a type of phage, known as M13, to recognise receptors found exclusively on the surface of cancer cells instead of bacterial cells. They also edited the virus's genetic material to include a therapeutic gene which activates when injected, producing a protein that destroys the cell. Trials have shown that phages only attack the cancer, unlike chemotherapy and radiation that can leave the patient quite toxic. What am I seeing on the screen here? We are looking at a section from the brain of an animal which was implanted with human glioblastoma cells. This border between the tumour 
and the healthy brain. What you see in green here is the phage. This phage was able to cross the blood-brain barrier and accumulate in the tumors without harming the healthy brain. The treatment requires thousands of phages, so they must be harvested. As you can see, she has the phage in very small volume. That's all we have at the moment. But she just adds the phage to the bacteria. Each bacteria serves as a factory to manufacture, to produce the phage. So the more bacteria, the more phage will be produced. In that flask, we have a mixture of bacteria and phages. We need to get rid of the bacteria. The centrifugation will separate between bacteria and bacteriophages. And that's all phages in there? That's all phages. The phages are delivered into the test subject via multiple injections. A low dose of a chemotherapy drug amplifies the therapy by activating the immune system. We met Richard and he'd had his uh, tumour taken out, but there was a little bit left behind. So is that where your phage therapy would be used? Surgery by itself is not enough to remove the whole tumours. It has to be combined with other therapeutic approaches like chemotherapy, radiation therapy, in order to destroy the remaining cells. But in these cells, you find what we call cancer stem cells, which are resistant to chemo and radiation therapy, from which the tumours grow back and lead to death of the patient. This is where our phage comes with this advantage because we show that our phage can find these cancer stem cells and destroy them. The other advantage of our phages, they can be given repeatedly without any safety issues, unlike other viral therapies or chemotherapy or, or other therapeutic agents. So how confident are you that phage therapy can cure glioblastoma? To be frank, only clinical trials in human with glioblastoma will prove that. But we are optimistic. We hope it will happen. We have to live in hope. Clinical trials may begin in the UK within the next three to five years, but they could start even earlier in other countries. So your outlook on life is just very positive. I try and make it as positive as possible. I mean, I've, ha I've had the cancer, I've had, it, I've had it taken out, I've had the drugs. I'm just cru cruising along now, waiting for it to happen again because they say it's inevitable, it's going to happen again. So if you had the opportunity to take part in a clinical trial, to try something new, yes. would you take it? Yes. I've, I've already decided that anything I can do to help other people is worth me doing. <laughs>